And really, ultimately, part of the my exodus from snot, some people don't know this, but or don't track it, but I left snot before Lynn Strait died. I left the band. Right. And I was fucked up on meth when I did it. I was on meth, and uh, I made a lot of mistakes, man, because um, I was sick. Yeah. You know, and I look back and I go, oh, man. Like, we will not regret the past, and I was just shut the door on it. I still have some regrets. I'm like, I wish I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. I wish it didn't work out that way. Ultimately, thankfully, I did. I joined a band with, with uh, Shannon Larkin called Amen. Um, and uh, ultimately, before Lynn died, he and I made up because he and I were oh, not wow. friends when I left the band. We were not friends. Yeah. And um, ultimately, they were like, like Jamie Miller, the drummer, and then the guy who had replaced me left the band. Hmm. And there were three shows that were booked. And um, they asked me to play. Lynn was like, hey, man, will you play these shows with us? I said, yeah, dude, I'll do it. And we totally, it was great, man. We you know, buried the hatchet or whatever, made peace yeah. and killed it these last three shows. We were on fire, man. It was, we, that band was, I mean, especially Lynn, was, we were, it was so explosive that it's like I, it couldn't continue, man. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. So we did those shows. And then the last conversation I had with Lynn Strait, um, we were supposed to meet up and go to this party at the Key Club, which was like, for like some porn release <laughs> sick yeah, Matt, yeah <laughs> Matt Zane's band Society One was playing you know and and uh, I was coming off meth that night and I couldn't get the fuck out of bed man so I texted him or whatever I called him or it was, it was beepers yeah. so I let, you know sent him a message or whatever I don't know how I did it but I couldn't go I, I couldn't make it and then I called him the next day and was like hey man sorry I couldn't you know I'm sick I didn't yeah. even tell him oh, I'm coming down from meth he I know that excuse yeah he would have been like oh I'll get it if I said, dude, I'm coming off meth, he would have been like, all right, cool. You got any more? <laughs> yeah, right. We smoked, he and I smoked meth out of a fucking light bulb one time in, in Malibu in, in like this beautiful spread in Malibu. What did you crack the end of? He, was, he did it. I don't know how he did it. When he did it, I was like, how are you doing that, bro? Yeah, I want to hit that. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I don't understand. Because we get creative. I can see that. A light bulb. I can see you could do it. What you was get it from scene? the back. You poke all in the back and then you drop it in. It's just like a pookie. But how did he break the glass of the... Yeah. That's what I'm saying. He broke yeah. the glass to make the pookie. Yeah. But, I don't... But whatever. What, what was it... Uh, um, Freaking... What movie with it? Uh, what's his name? Baldwin was in where he's like, uh, oh, man, we don't have our bunk. Get me a funnel, a corkscrew, and an avocado. It's like, we find our ways. We find the ways. <laughs> we find our fucking ways. Lynn to had it, bro. I was like... How that works, too. I was amazed. I'm like, damn, bro. Yeah. Yes. Let me hit that. So... uh the last conversation I had with him, man, was really beautiful. I'm so happy. We just, we had been on tour for, with each other for years and, you know, on 30 hour drives, maybe talked for, you know, 25 minutes straight, one on one. Mm -hmm. And then, like, we talked for like three hours on the phone, man. And at one point, I was like, dude, we've been on the phone for like three hours. And he goes, rad. Anyway, so check. And he, we kept talking. And it was so cool, man. Then a couple days later, Mikey Dolan calls me and, and, um, Ironically, I don't know if it's ironic or not, but I'm, I had a, I was living with my friends and I had my own phone line, and I was watching TV and like a Geico commercial came on and I was like, I don't have insurance and I'm driving all over the place. Oh, I called Geico for a, <laughs> for a, a quote. My friend comes in with the phone. He, Mikey called her line and she's he's, she's like, hey, Mikey's on. I go, I tell him I got to call him back, and she goes, oh, okay, and she turns around and she goes, oh, and she's like, hey, Sonny, he says he really needs to talk to you, and so I'm on the phone. Hold on, Geico. Hey, Mikey. And he goes, are you sitting down? And I said, hold on. I got to go. Click. And I said, what's up, dude? And he goes, he's gone, bro. I knew exactly what he meant. Mm -hmm. He just goes, he's gone, bro. And I was like, damn. I literally went, damn. Like, that's today. Like, we all knew it was going to happen, man. Mm -hmm. He was. It's just how Lynn was. You know, Lynn would love you to death or hate you to death. But either way, he was going to kill you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. He was a lovely man, and he was a maniac. Mm 